Hello everyone and welcome to what is essentially a tank that holds your horses. Might be balanced. This is the QN506. This is what happens when the Chinese look at the Terminator, look at the T55, slap the two together, put some ERA on, then go, how about four different we 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 uh, weapon systems and go, hey, we're done. This is essentially a Chinese Terminator that goes to 11 for weapons and firepower, but very much weakens itself in terms of the armor and the hit points department. Starting off, this is a fully upgraded premium vehicle, so there is nothing we have to do. There is an improved computer, there's an improved commander site, there's a rangefinder, there's an improved thermal imager, which is all pretty well and good. The thermal imager will also stack with the active thermal camera for a total of 90% spotting through foliage, so which is always pretty nice. The vehicle, like I said, has four different weapon systems. You have the 30mm AP, 185 pen, which is pretty decent, but it does come in a salvo size of 200 with a pretty small reload time. It comes with heat rounds, which very much function like the strikers, but they do slightly more damage, and I believe they have slightly less pen. No, they don't, but they are heat rounds compared to AP on the striker, but they are, however, a lot more accurate with the minimum spread being 0.12 compared to the striker 0.14. So it's all pretty well and good. It also comes with what is essentially better versions of the Crabs missiles, which are always nice and good. AFV, TD. As you can see here, um, 1100 pen compared to the Crabs. 1100 pen also, but I believe they also do a little more damage. So. And you also get four of them, and they have pretty good tracking and module damage that I've seen. And, like I said, you also get four of them. And then lastly, also some loiter and recon missiles, which very much work as a one-shot thing. So, if there's an enemy in the bush and you want to see them, fire it at it. But, they are very specific to the place you aimed at, so be warned, the missiles can and will crash into the ground, as has happened multiple times with me. Aside from that, we also have the stealth ability and top speed. Generally speaking, I would prefer to go with stealth as the 30% camouflage factor um, does mean that you can and will be pretty stealthy most of the time. Um, also, Surplus Park creates first aid cabinet proof fire extinguisher field repeal kit. Given the fact that you're quite squishy and there's going to be a lot of things firing at you, the saving your emirac and engine from torching your tank to a Chinese lantern burst is usually pretty decent. So this is all the strengths of the tanks. So what we have is a 90% spotting through foliage, very strong weapon system, quite strong weapons, unique rockets which will give you a very good defense in close combat versus Russian AFEs, TDs, light tanks and sometimes MBTs, four very strong missiles, a loiter and recon system and a decent auto cannon. What are its weaknesses? Well, to start off it only has 2300 hit points, which means this thing is very squishy, and versus its own auto cannons, it can be penetrated frontally. Versus its own heat rounds, this is 300 heat pan, the same is going to happen. And the ERA isn't really going to stand up to much. For instance, a tier 5 AP shell, the AMX 40 will basically butcher this, and this is with 375 pen. Now, thankfully, this here is a unmanned turret. And given the armor thickness, 299, does mean that you will have protection versus HE rounds and hopefully versus some heat MP as well, but that's not really a given. However, this is still a very, very big target, especially that thing up there. I'm not sure if that actually counts towards a actual module. Let's see. It does, which might mean that you might get spotted very quickly. But apart from that, there is always a choice of commanders. Now, I generally take Erin, as with Erin, this thing will have a total camouflage of... Well, with Erin's um, utility, of course, this means this tank will have a total of about 41% camouflaged and 49% will stop, which is pretty decent. Um, other than that, 
um, given the fact that I have found the missiles to do some pretty decent damage, there is also always the choice of using Sabrina. The module damage should be able to let you ammo rack things and some okay camouflage. And there's also the choice of being able to use um, Joshua Seagrove for help with the heat rounds. Always pretty nice there. And of course, since these are missiles, of course, and if you you can very much go missile only with it. Where the hell is Rashid? Where did I put you, dude? Rashid's missile control and stuff will help pretty nice as well. Crew skills wise, pretty standard AFV things. Um, off road driving and probably accuracy while moving. And you do have a gunner, so I would probably go for accuracy decreased while firing is improved by 23%. And you can also go for the cannon hit points because people will be shooting your turret a lot. Um, but aside from that, sharpshooter maybe, it's very much a tank that doesn't really have any single shot missiles, but accuracy should be able to help with the rockets, but none of these weapon systems really stand out on their own, except for perhaps a UAV, but so, in my experience, um, this tank does very well when you use all the weapon systems combined into one single glorious state, and I will never be able to come back from saying that. So, um, let's have a look at some games. We'll be doing a PvP game and a PvE game. Who would have funk? So, let's have a look at those games, eh? So, we are on Cold Strike, which is a wonderful map. And interestingly enough, the rocket pods will actually depress lower than the gun. And I'm not actually sure, but I think if collision happens, they might be able to hit the tank. So, props to China for a tank that can shoot itself. Um, aside from that, this is usually a pretty MBT heavy map. Um, as you can see, the spam of T15-152s. Hopefully they'll start to fizzle away after once this recording is done, which is a Friday. So, I'm going to simply stay back for this one. Um, the low amount of hit points means that I really don't want to get early, hit early by the enemy. Um, especially those T14s which will do a tremendous amount of damage. Um, 1000, even more if they're using Cortez or they get a lucky roll, will do pretty much half hit, hit points to this thing. So you all need to be careful of getting shot at. This is a fragile Terminator which is kind of funny to say but it does pay for it and it is pretty well balanced. You have the weapon systems, you have to use them. Ding dong. And so unfortunately I did get spotted on that one. And I am using Erin for this. I do actually want to take this out with Sabrina. But if you do have Erin, probably the best thing to use. Now the... Briefly spotted the XM-103 over there. And I did unfortunately hit the Barak. The um, spotting UAV does not count towards... Um, your damage, uh, your your spotting, which hopefully should be fixed. Um, but as you can see here, the missiles do fly pretty well, and they are pretty damn decent. Five second reload between them, ten second reload time. So for a total, that's twenty seconds, and a three second cycle time means that you'll fire all of all of your missiles off in nine seconds after the first one, and they'll be pretty well done later. 709 damage, a little bit more powerful than the crabs, but the fact that they do feel more powerful than the crab, I don't know why, but three hits on the T on the T14, all pretty good. And the heat rockets are also MPAT as well, which means I'm going to completely bully the Samada. And yes, they can be used to deal damage to MBTs at long range, and. Hopefully, there's a T14 spotted. Hello T14, how are you? And kill by that there. Now the rockets, um, I wouldn't really recommend using them as a primary, actually this doesn't really have a primary weapon. Like I said, the weapon systems all really function together making for a pretty fun vehicle. But aside from that, it's a blaster play as you can see here, 4000 damage already. Well, technically 3000 because soon I did unfortunately hear Teddy Friendly in the butt. But you do have four UAV shots and they do have a 60 second cooldown before you use them. 
so thankfully these things aren't going to be banned in PvP. However, I don't really see them as being used to spot an entire team. Um, I would see them used such as in front lines to spot the AFEs who usually populate the ridges of the game or the higher um, bushes and stuff. So the UAVs do have their uses and I don't really think the UAVs are going to be as broken as we thought. Unfortunately nothing spotted. So one rocket. UAV left. Now the UAV kind of just spawns from the vehicle. Um, I it does have its collision model, so it doesn't. Um, so it's not immune. It will hit buildings. It will hit things. So maps like Moscow, it's not really going to be that much useful for going cross map. But a map such as Cold Strike, it should be pretty useful. Now, um, if you did notice at the start, this thing is very tall compared to a vehicle. So while the camo range is okay, it does mean that issues can and will be had. You see there, 297 damage to the Centauro, pretty decent, but there is also a flat 20 second delay. They are a autoloader, um, very much like all the other rocket units in the game, the MTLB, the Striker, etc, etc, etc. Didn't spot anything with the UAV there, which was actually quite sad, but oh well. So T14152 over there, I was hoping to get the kill on him, but unfortunately not. And in this situation here, I was hoping that maybe taking engine, engine override would be better, as this doesn't really seem to be the fastest vehicle in the world. Um, after this we will take a look at the other stats, such as mobility and whatnot, since I think I forgot to do them. but. Aside from now, hopefully should get a couple more shots off on the enemy. Centauros run up over there and it's pretty obvious the enemy team has gone around. So there's still some more damage to take, some more to do. Of course I'm between with my friends Heady and Minus Tanks here. We're very much doing the Brit Brigade. And uh, I believe this is where things are going to get slightly edgy. So I can still be one-shotted by those T14s, the XM-183 with the 120, even just by using average rolls, especially with Cortez will kill me, so, but... Hi Armada, do you want to get plinked to death? <laughs> that is what the missiles are quite fun for. Boop. And plinked him to death. Now there are enough of the missiles to be able to um, spam them, especially with Alicia of course. Some one Amada. No, no, go around him. Can I hit him? Identify. There we go. Triggered Alicia, and now this T14152 is using HE. So simply, I'm just going to do the try and alter tradition of firing into the smoke. And good night, sweet prince. So let's have a look at those game, those uh, post game stats, and see how it compares to the Terminator and some other vehicles of the same tier. Anyway, like I said, let's compare it to the stats of some of the other vehicles in the same tier. Now we're looking at the soft hats. Soft stats, not necessarily the other ones, so Terminator 2, T49. Um, we're going to be looking specifically at the gun tank roll, AGDS, and I, I think these four are the main ones. So as you can see here, it does have very low hit points. Less than the Terminator, much less than the AGDS. Second worst hull armor, but unlike the rest of these, it does have its unmanned turret. The Terminator having its unmanned turret as well. Camouflage wise, it's only beaten out by the Vigilante with the Terminator and the AGDS having absolutely shite ones. The gun depression is pretty bad as well, and it does also have the best free range in the tier as well. But the T4, but the T249 does have the best foliage at 165%, I believe. Apart from that, its minimum spread is pretty nice, but remember this is using an auto cannon, but it's still actually a much better minimum spread than the AGDS. And finally, turret traverse is okay. 51 degrees is pretty okay in my book. And lastly, it weighs 30 tons, unlike the Terminator 2 and the AGDS, which means it will get squashed quite a bit. And of 4.6 seconds is, pre is pretty relatively nimble, but the low top speed of 60 combined with the Terminator and the complete lack of armor also compared to the Terminator means this thing will be chased down by MBTs quite quickly. So 
There you go. Anyway, I did promise we'll be looking at a PvE game, so let's have a look at a PvE game. Anyway, welcome to Perseus. Now, this is a much better map for a QM, as there's a lot of flanking opportunities on this part, and by saving the UAVs, you are able to usually spot the enemy in the two later caps. Not to mention the heat rounds here should be pretty useful, but unfortunately the camera bug is not working as per quite a lot of games. So, anyway, where are they? Where are they seems to be a leopard, and I think he's gonna die. I think I am trying to aim for, for the Amarak on this one, but just give up. Now, thankfully, uh, the leopard's armor is bad enough that you can actually pen the top of them with this. See there, 30 damage, 30 damage, 30 damage, 30 damage, 30 damage, 30 damage. There are enough of these to do about 600 at worst, and it's usually about 1200 damage. <sighs> Aside from that, more PV, more enemies running around. Uh, as you can see, the older cannon is pretty much standard, kind of like the Terminators 2s, so it works. There's nothing special about the older cannon, there's nothing really special about the missiles or the rockets. So, like I said, it all functions perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Aside from that, Evo moving up, Bradley, and everything over there. more enemies running around. Uh, it is actually surprisingly difficult to comment in PvE because there's not really that much going on. But, hey, this is actually pretty decent for PvE so we might as well use it and definitely because I didn't have any good PvP games as good as the other ones. Well, most of my PvP games are around 4,000 to 6,000 damage so nothing special whether this is a pretty decent PvE game to be honest. So I thought, you know, Hey, if it's there, it's there. And uh, there are some complaints about me not showing any game mode other than PvP in my reviews, so there you go. Aside from that, the UAV doesn't spot anything. Um, I believe I aimed wrong on that one. So, yeah, the missile is very much dependent on your aim, to be honest. Now, um, if this was a Terminator, I would actually be able to move up and go hold down, but since this is not, and I don't want to be shot at, I'm just going to sit here. Fortunately, a bounce. We do have two Vigilantes with us, and I believe Tank Sniper is finally connected to the game. And given the fact that they are rockets and everything else in the tank, you are able to switch from the rockets to the missiles to the rockets to the missiles all the time, which can actually give you almost a continuous stream of heat rounds or shape charges from this tank. As you can see here. Now, I don't know how, but they do seem to do a little bit more module damage than other missiles. I'm not sure if this is me just not using uh, the crabs kind of missiles often, or maybe it's a new thing. But if there is one downside with this tank's weapon system, and it's that there are no high explosive rounds, which the heat MP rounds kind of cover that, but that does mean that you are taking that heavy hit to the camo. But as you can see there in the camo, the AP rounds do take a heavy hit to your camo while it seems that not everything else does. So. The heat rounds seem to be for long range use, which is actually quite interesting given the fact that they're basically heat MP rockets. But, oh well. Hit on the A rounds. I'd say usually 800 to 900 damage is pretty usual, and at the very least at this point I was really enjoying this tank. We're on 20,000 damage already, and this isn't even close to the final result of this game. You can see a couple of hits on this 99 here. I'm 
Now, I don't know the way they function, but they do seem to have a little bit hit detect, a little bit better hit detection than other MP rockets do. And the fact you can spam them pretty quickly, there's a 0.5 second delay or something between them, but it is usually better to simply take your time. There's no rush. No fuss, no muss. So, let's continue on to the next cat point. To where this thing's utility really has its use in PvE, which is, of course, spotting the cap circles, such as on this map where the AI do get a pretty heavy firing range. As you can see there, spotted a RCR and a Leopard 2A5. So, and while it won't exactly designate them, it will give you an idea of what's lurking in the shadows as the AI do tend to do that. So it's not a be all end all, but it is, to be honest, definitely a very useful utility to have. 9.35 to the Mr. Leopard over there. Um, now the rockets are accurate enough that pulling these shots off can be a thing, but some mixed results as you can see here. So continue firing in at Mr. Leopard, 96, yada yada yada, 92, eh. The rockets will go through the turret roofs of MBTs at a better angle. Um, as you can see yeah, the rockets are much better doing that. And a reload in progress, or not. And we are now, and this is when I actually loaded the um, and as you can see there, well, this is when I loaded the uh, ammo cycle, as you can see there, firing the rockets. That's what the burst fire does. Okay, let's put over there, spotted, kill him. Good utility there, as shown. Kill on the ass card. Um, in fact, I'd quite like to see more auto cannons have a clip potential like this. It should work pretty well. Um, that is a soft kill APS redirected my missiles. Probably wouldn't have this kind of problem with Rashid, but then again, I would probably also get spotted with Rashid, so They have it and the fun's not over yet because there's even more AI um, There is usually quite a bit of damage you can do on this map um, As you can see there I am hogging the damage much to the charging of my teammates, but hey You gotta do what you gotta do right and this is when I'm showcasing this Rockets, very lovely firepower by the way with this thing. Um, there is, I honestly can't complain about this thing's firepower. It's fun. And well, if I make a mistake here, if I get spotted, I don't have any armor to back me up. It doesn't have an APS. The ERA is not going to save you, so it's all down to you to make it work. Not that it's a bad thing, you know. And pretty much the rest of this is in the bots over there so let's uh, have a couple of closing statements about this vehicle. So how do I honestly feel about the QN506? Well I as usual with most premiums higher tier ones anyway now um, I get them as part of the fact that I'm part of the community team so bug reports and stuff moderating the game and so forth so I did get this for free but I'm not really going to sugarcoat it, but this vehicle is actually quite fun. And unlike the Striker Radats, which does have its issues, um, I've had an absolute blast playing this. It's been like playing a more firepower-oriented Terminator. Now, the Q506 was actually quite difficult to get. Um, A bunch of players did was able to get it during the bounty hunt, and um, there was a pre-order event. And unfortunately, it won't really be available until I believe the first quarter of 2020. So, but I do have this, and it's fun. And I will definitely be playing it on my PvP streams, um, and like say the mobile artillery vehicle, simply because I believe this thing is balanced. Thanos would definitely like this and so should you, and if you do get the money and the chance to pick one of these things up, you won't regret it. And that's the 
biggest endorsement I can give for this tank is that I've had fun. And to be honest, that's what matters. And the fact that it's balanced, of course. Don't really enjoy playing unbalanced things personally. But anyway, that's it for the QN506, the Chinese Terminator. The Hey, let's grab a T55, slap a bunch of weapon systems on it and see how it goes. And it goes well. It has its drawbacks, it has its strengths, but like I said, it's been a positive and fun experience all around. And I hope you've had a pun it and uh, had a fun and positive experience all around. Um, this will be due on the 27th of October, I believe, a Sunday. And then after this, I'm going to see if I can get a review together for the M8 Losat, which will be an absolute blast to get games out of, hopefully, maybe. But yeah, if you enjoyed the stream, leave a like below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be pushing out more game reviews. Um, in terms of reviews to do afterwards, provided we don't get a sudden deluge and slew of new content, the next vehicles to review will be the MGM Losat, the Griffin, the TTB, followed by the um, 249, the M1A1, the TATU and the AGDS, the last three being vehicles that need a remaster of as they have, as they have changed significantly. So that's it for now guys, bye for now, and see you all later.